We're essentially a, a group of 30 product design engineers and marketers that started with a dream that we could make products to last for as long as possible. So currently we, uh, we specify our products to last for 70,000 hours and just two weeks ago we had the New Zealand government give us uh, a 94,000 hour um, test uh, simulation for um, one of our flagship products. So it's something we're backing up and it's independently tested. So that's really what kind of drives us as a company, those two elements. One is you know, making things uh, and people and spaces look as good as they possibly can and also trying to make things last for as long as possible to in reduce um, the cycles of consumption that we believe to be a little bit unnecessary at times. So we're just going to concentrate on a... This looks really complex. <laughs> so we should be able to get through this, I'm sure, by about 10 or so this evening. And no, we're not going to concentrate on, on all of this, but this essentially are all the factors that go into a lighting design. And this is, this is something that, that Bernie, from point of view, really takes into consideration. And that's what their team really looks at. So we've got the luminous environment at the top, um, which essentially is uh, all of the factors that go into the actual lighting design itself. And then at the bottom, we have the, the human interface and, and the, the ergonomics that actually go with that. And the interface between those two is what creates that, that experience. This is a, a quick comparison that we've done between um, a redwood interior um, and using a standard uh, ADCRI LED and one of our true, set of our true color LEDs, which is, are on display over here. We've actually got the booth over there demonstrating exactly the same thing. It's an ADCRI LED and a 95 CRI LED, so if you want to have a play with that, that later. Um, so what's, what is the difference here? I mean, we've got a metric which essentially is ADCRI, but it, it looks extremely different. I mean, there's, there's a marked contrast between those two, and it's, and it's because we're not really capturing everything within CRI. So this CRI isn't really a, it's, it's an element that we always used to consider within lighting design and, and product design um, for lighting. But it's never been a, a massive issue because you always you knew that you had consistency with one technology. So if you had your old Edison tungsten filament lamp, you always knew that you were going to get 100 CRI because the CRI essentially is based on the tungsten filament lamp heated up to a particular temperature, be it 5,000 Kelvin, which the actual physical temperature over that produces a very white light, or 3000 Kelvin, which produces quite a warm light, which is actually the, the actual physical temperature that that tungsten filament gets heated up to and, and it'll emit that, that light. So with the Edison lamp, it was always 100. It was really predictable. And the linear fluoros were always predictable unless you're using triphosphors. Um, metal highlights were always awful. You know, we always knew we were going to get 20 CRI or something out of them. CFLs were always going to be 55 or 60. You know, there's really, there's quite a degree of consistency there. But now with LED, we test uh, anything from 55 up to 98 with some of the experiments that we've got going on in, in our labs. So it's a huge variance there. And that variance really makes a massive impact on, on the quality of an interior. I mean, if, if, if you're an architect and you're spending a large amount of money specifying you know, a beautiful floor and beautiful interiors and beautiful marble, and you put in a 55 CRI light over a 95 CRI light, you're essentially halving the effectiveness of it. And because all of our meaning is derived from the relative understanding of of these materials if we know the standard of something like a, a good wood and how good it actually looks and we see something under low quality light, we almost interpret it as being a, a cheaper or inferior product or even to the point of interpreting it as being vinyl flooring or something like that. It can really get that bad. So that's the reason that we, we need to really consider CRI as, a, as an important quotient with, with LED. So CRI itself is, um, is a measurement of the, uh, the spectral intensity of different wavelengths of light itself. So when we mix uh, all the wavelengths of light together, which essentially are all the colors, we get white light. Uh, this is the old uh, Dark Side of the Moon album pick. So what we're doing here is it's just splitting out the light into its colors itself. So those colors are, are represented at different levels of intensity. And it's the uh, consistency of intensity across those that gives us an accurate representation of materials, people, and architecture within the, the real built environment. So just, this is the spectral power distribution across, um, this is going to get a little nerdy, but we'll come out of it, it's all right. Um, so this is the spectral power distribution of essentially, essentially the intensity of each of those colors or those wavelengths of light within each of these technologies. So you can see a CFL on the front, it's just absolutely awful. And it's got little peaks, it means you've got no consistency across your color range. And you move further back to incandescent, which is really predictable, and then to LED in the back there. That LED essentially is, is a form that's very consistent across 80 CRI light. It's hard to sort of see there, but there's a, not a huge emphasis on the, the reds, and there's, um, there's low power intensity inside some of the blues there as well. But we'll get to some of the details of, of those measurements. So 
We measure CRI by taking these eight colors, which is one to eight, rather than the magic R9 that sits on the end there. So R, R1 to R8, what we do essentially is we, we put up uh, the, one of the colors, R1, and we put it under a tungsten filament lamp, and then we put another light source on it, such as an LED, and it's, we measure it based on the ability to be able to change, uh, differentiate them based on numerical scale. So we mathematically simulate that and get a score out of 100 as how well they actually match based on human perception. So it has actually got a human factor to it as well. So these aren't very intense colors, uh, the 1 to 8. Forget about the R9 for a second. They're not fully saturated colors. You can actually score reasonably high out of 100 of each of these um, quite easily. Uh, so for us, we score 95 on a lot of our lights. So we would average across that 1 to 8, 95. But at the, when it hits R9, which is a very intense, um, intense red, you can fall down really rapidly. And that's very, very common with LED. So the whole range, the extended CRI range, which is something to really look for in, in a lot of lighting, has a lot of these saturated colors. So that's R9 right up to R14. And R9 is definitely the, it's the one that has the most variance, but it's actually one of the ones that has the most importance. We use red so much. Wood is, it really creates the depth within wood. It's, it's actually, it's the color of blood. And if you look at someone, if you look at yourself in the mirror and you see uh, quite a bit of, uh, you see red and you see epidermis with your skin and, and whatnot. If you don't have that red being reflected, you look completely flat. You just see the epidermis. It's like you're, you're not alive. So it's a really important factor in actually making us, making us look as good as we possibly can. Nina volunteered our marketing manager to go under, <laughs> under the lights here. So we get an 80 CRI on the left and 90 on the right. So you can see a marked contrast in the way the blood's actually reflecting and obviously all of the colors in a, in a scarf. Um, just before we left as well, um, we chucked some, some lights in the lab. That's, that's Jason, our lab engineer, tech engineer in the, in the lab there. And we just grabbed three, three lights, so one of ours, and then we had a Philips light and a, a peer light. It's spelled incorrectly, but no, it's really worried. Um, so there are nine values scoring out of 100. At 6.9 for the Philips master LED, and peer light was scoring 20 or so, 22 or so. 20 is about the industry average. That means that it's producing 20% of the possible intensity of red light. So if you put that light under wood or someone else, it's, got, it's only reflecting 20% of the blood or 20% of the qualities of the wood, which is insane. Like, you know, it's, you're essentially like cutting back the, the reflection of something that is quite true, hence the name we created, True Color, for, for things that represent color well. So we're scoring 89 there, which is as high as we know of in the industry across the across the world. Um, variance is the other factor because, um, as I said before, everything's, all this meaning is very relative. So if you've got a high uh, light quality that's a light blue or a, a green or a yellow, and they actually dip relative to each other, then what we do, our brain actually thinks that we're getting an even spectrum right across the board. So it sees a green or a yellow, and it interprets those, those low values at a similar intensity, which shifts the perception of that color entirely. So you might go out and be wearing a a lovely jacket that's you know multiple colors and it might look perfect when you before you go out but as soon as you hit the cafe or the restaurant or the club or whatever it is you look completely different if you're under light that isn't actually got that that consistency so that consistency is really important for perception so in a lot of our lights we have a it's actually not variance it's the square root of variance is the standard deviation which is actually four so that means it can go four either side of the, me, the mean so if we're 90 we're never going to be more than four above or below that. So with the, uh, the Phillips one there, it looks like it's sitting plus or minus 15, which is about 30 or so, which is a really large differentiation. So with all these limitations, there's been a big move and a big push to, to look at creating a new system that allows us, to, a new metric that allows us to be able to measure light because CRI doesn't allow us to, to measure these consistencies. It doesn't extend into the R9 ratings. It, you know, it's just one tight little field that, that isn't absolute and representative of, of, the, um, of the environments that these things are being put into. So NIST, which is a, an American group, the National Institute of Standards and, and Testing, they've actually been charged with the, uh, the responsibility to go and come up with a, a new methodology. They've been at this since 2007 or so. Uh, they've got a committee and the way they work the standard is it's an absolute, uh, the committee requires absolute, an absolute decision. So, and they've got eight positives and one negative, and the one negative represents the uh, fluoro industry. So I wouldn't be watching this space for anything happening soon for a, a new standard uh, coming out. So 
that forced us to, to essentially put our own mark on things, which we were calling true color. And true color, at the moment, uh, means that everything's always going to be higher than 95 CRI. We're always going to have R ratings above 80. We're always going to be within two-step macadam ellipses in terms of our, our color shift and consistency across the different actual units. We've got low color shift across the entire um, lifetime of the product, one and a half percent or so, which is extremely small. So this is a, a dynamic label that we're putting in place where we're always aspiring to create the ultimate lighting experience. So these, these are metrics that back that up will always, always be changing, changing consistently. So that's where it is at the moment. That all sounds you know, a little bit nerdy. There's a lot of numbers there. But uh, the, the bottom line is that true color, the, mo the, the label that we're putting on things, actually does make things look better. <laughs> that's the bottom line. So um, we just quickly went through and uh, popped in our, our little booth here, a couple of little materials. This is exactly the same material. This is, these are both 16 watt LED lights. I think ours actually has a slightly higher efficiency, so the intensity might be off, but nowhere near what's actually showing there. The reason that the true color one's actually coming up is such intensity is because it has got that high R9 value, so the reds are being reflected. If the wavelengths are not there and the, the material has that reflective property, it's never actually going to represent. The light just disappears. The intensity just disappears. We've got a number of, number of these actually in a lot of materials, so if anybody wants to have a bit of a, a, bit of a play after the presentation, then by all means do so. Um, we've also uh, got a, I'm going to take this, take this moment, we've got a, a new program coming up uh, in, the, uh, in about two weeks. Uh, essentially, we, we do have, as Tamsin said, representation in offices um, around the world, and one of them happens to be in Kenya. So we've got representation in, in Mombasa, of all places. I don't know if anybody's been there, but it's, it's an interesting place to sell premium lights, but they do sell for some reason. Um, so while, we, while we've actually been in that market, we've, uh, we've noticed that there's uh, really low access to, to energy. And so what happens in terms of lighting is people burn paraffin lamps. So you've got about 600 million people that are burning paraffin lamps at the moment now in Africa. And that's equivalent to about 40 cigarettes a day inside. And so they've got 2.3 million people that are dying of lung disease. Um, not really pretty. Um, so we actually thought, could we, actually, could we create a system that allowed us to be able to, um, to uh, link our lights and the sale or specification of our lights together with this? And, and so we created this program called Light Up Kenya. And we're about to launch it in two weeks. So for every house that gets lit up in Australia, we'll go and light up a house in Kenya using our, our distribution network. So it should be a really successful one. We're really, really proud of it because it's something that we've, um, we've all been uh, working towards. A bit of honorable purpose. Thanks, guys.